Brilliant. Yeah, Mervin, Nate, uh, carry us on. Yeah. All right. I, uh, I, I also almost did a bunch of merfolk stuff. That's weird, um, right? And I'm, I'm a little, it's very strange. It's bizarre synchronicity. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that I decided. I was like, well, but it's Thanksgiving week. So I'll do some Thanksgiving y kind of stuff, even though all of sure. those people are, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a shitty holiday. <laughs> no one likes it. Sure. It's not one of the Maybe best. They do. I don't know. And then I like, when I, I eat like all to the feast. food, I, yeah, I, I but then I get the all full part. and sleepy and I get indigestion and I go, oh, am I going to die? And then I'm like, nope, ate too much. I'll be fine. I love to feast. I just always think about this time when I was a kid, uh, like we all had to go to my aunt's church and they had a giant teepee set up and it, it's an, I guarantee you everyone in there, uh, except for like one or two people probably was a middle-class white person uh, sure. sitting at this teepee talking about Thanksgiving, like somehow roping in evangelical worship with what um you know I, you know there's there's a lot to it american hey, listen, history is full of genocide look we're not imperialists <laughs> is what we're saying we just like grubbing we like rolls uh, and such we yeah. get it we're woke up we eat, we eat that turkey with a bite of bitterness uh so i did uh i went i went to looking for uh, some pilgrim type of ghosts and uh, i found this Ooh. thing uh, was from 1420 WBSM, New Bedford's news talk station. I bet a lot of pilgrim ghosts talk like this. Uh, The ghosts of pilgrims lurk on Plymouth's burial hill. Nice. Just kind of being big bummers, telling people not to dance. I hope you're enjoying your turkey. Accusing teens of being witches for knowing math, no, you know, pure and shit. <laughs> sure. This is, yeah, this is, uh, ghost stories from Plymouth and kind of the surrounding area. Cool. Uh, right. Cemeteries usually mark the end of someone's life, but in the case of Burial Hill in Plymouth, Mass., it's a cemetery that marks the beginning. It was the beginning of America as we know it, of our country and our history as a people. I don't want to gloss over the eventual near extinction of the native people that followed, but that's something for another time and for other legends. <laughs> when the pilgrims first arrived in Plymouth in 1620, it's well documented that they barely made it through that first winter. In fact, many did not. 52 out of the 102 that arrived in Plymouth died that winter and were interred at Coles Hill. Further excavation of Coles Hill in the 18th and 19th century led to some of their remains being dug up, and they were reinterred in the 1920s in a, in a sarcophagus on the hill in the spot believed to be where they were originally found. So there, there's a, they pulled out a bunch of skeletons, sure. and then they shoved them back into a mass grave, thinking, yep. I think that's where they were. Took them Which from the always... bone pile, put them into the bone box. Into the Begging box, for yeah. ghosts. <laughs> Uh, some Mixed believe up the that bones, could be, you know, some people <laughs> peed on it. Yeah, dogs for sure. <laughs> some believe that they, that could be why the now defunct Plymouth National Wax Museum at the top of Coles Hill has so many strange shadows lurking about and other creepy phenomena. Mm. So not only did they mass rebury a bunch of people, they put a wax museum on top. Good God! Oh, that's just asking. <sighs> <laughs> Like paranormal preparedness. Uh, yeah. don't, don't do either of these things. Do any of that. And if you come from a long line of either cemetery keeper or wax <laughs> make wax person maker, wax pers- yeah, don't uh, don't mix the two. You you your kind are not allowed to be together because like wax wax uh wax statues are just nothing but empty vessels for souls for wandering souls. It should be like a Roger Corman's Romeo and Juliet. It's about a, a grave digger <laughs> and a wax maker. Sure. <laughs> that's actually pointing it's really good. <laughs> Uh, but there was another hill just a short distance away, rising even higher over the shores of Plymouth. It would come to be known as Burial Hill. And while there are numerous other haunted cemeteries and graveyards across the country, this might be America's first. 
Originally, the pilgrims built their first fort atop a burial hill, as it gave them an ample view of much of the colony below. Because it stood as a central focal point for the pilgrims, it was also used as a meeting house, a church, and a courthouse. Scholars believe that around 1637, the pilgrims also began using it as a graveyard. Hmm. Here are the plots of some of the Mayflower passengers, many of their grave markers lost to the ravages of time, create a spooky reminder of the sacrifice of those earliest settlers. It is here that the Mayflower descendant Thomas Southward Howland is buried. According to legend, Howland met his end when he invoked the ire of the witch Mother Crew, Oof. who had been living on his property the without witch his Mother mission. Crew. Well, the witch, like comma, a hip hop crew, but Mother oh. Crew. Oh, I was like, yeah, damn, yeah. you do Cap- not want to cross the witch Mother Crew. <laughs> I mean, it's still capital M, capital C. <coughs> sure. Uh, MC Witchcraft. <coughs> Got it. Uh, upon forcing her to leave, Mother Crew warned him, make your peace because you will not live to see another sunset. They'll dig your grave on Burial Hill. And that's exactly what they did when he fell from his horse and died the next day. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. That was uh, us. There's, there's also a mass grave under an obelisk where the bodies of 70 men are buried following the 1778 wreck of the Brigadier General Arnold, a ship which ran aground during a blizzard. Even though the residents of Plymouth could see the stranded ship, they couldn't get to it for days because of the harsh weather, and by the time they arrived, most of the men had frozen to death. Hmm. Captain James Maggie was one of the few who survived, but he asked to be buried with his crew, and although it's believed he was not buried there, to this day he's still reported seeing roaming Burial Hill. He's probably not. That uh, sounds like a ghost who's trying to get in there. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's I, I appreciate the man's loyalty, <laughs> I suppose, at the very least. <laughs> he was gonna go alive into the grave of his men. Uh, numerous other graves dating back to pilgrim days are scattered throughout the cemetery, which saw its last burial in 1957. Uh, and there's a bunch of pictures of different graves. Uh, at the foot of one side of Burial Hill is the John Carver Inn, named for the first governor of the Plymouth Colony. On this same site during the American Revolution stood a house that was inhabited by medical students who would sneak up Burial Hill at night and rob graves for cadavers on which to practice. Uh, grave robbing was nothing new to Plymouth. In fact, the pilgrims survived the first harsh winter in part by stealing food offerings that had been buried alongside deceased natives. Cool move, pilgrims. Uh, and <laughs> we ask why all of American land is cursed. This no, no, no. Is Thanksgiving, why. they shed it. <laughs> But by the time of the revolution, it was a major crime. The medical students were banished, but the victims of their crime remained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, To this day, their spirits still roam the halls of the third floor of the John Carver Inn, and in particular, torment those who stay in room 309. Oh, it is. It's nice when there's a room, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I I mean, I, I have to assume the room 309 was like the the cadaver cutting spot as, sure medical students as someone who's played phasmophobia i do <laughs> enjoy it when the ghost has been already located yes and you know not to go to that room <laughs> so right yeah. or to go to that room if that's your if that's your jam if you yeah. need some jam ghost jam tastes like welcome to the ghost I don't know, jam. marrow yeah probably marrow <laughs> Do you think that's yeah. what ghosts taste like? <laughs> Marrow, sulfur, I guess, maybe. A yeah, little okay. bit, uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Bones, you know, ghost flavors. Yeah. Uh, also at the base of Burial Hill is Town Square, where there's a stone marker in remembrance of Metacom, or as he was called by the English, King Philip. Oh. Met- <laughs> Met- <laughs> oh, those Medi- Brits. Metacon. My name is Metacon. Oh, that's horrible. Okay. Mm. How about King Philip? (laughs) Metacom was the son of the great Sasha Massasoit, who was an ally to the pilgrims in their earliest days. Yet Massasoit and his own and his sons, Metacom and Wamsetta, watched as the English began to convert their people over to Christianity, the so-called praying Indians, and attempted to obliterate the Wampanoag culture. 
Following the death of Masasoit and the suspected murder of Wamseta, Metacom became Sachem and eventually engaged in a brief but bloody war with the colonists, the wow. deadliest war per capita ever fought on American soil. Cool. Ooh. Uh, I mean, awful. I know who won. Yeah, yeah but he gave it a shot, huh? Yeah. He gave it a shot. He's like, and, look, I don't you know, think this Thanksgiving thing's going to work out. <laughs> You seem to be taking all of our shit and not sharing. Yeah. <laughs> not giving us your stuff in return as promised. Uh, it ended with Metacom's capture and his head was placed on a spike in Town Square Oof. where it stood for 20 years. Mm. Jesus in, Christ! In good Christian fashion. <laughs> you know, that's the guy who helped us. Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the guy who helped us. That's the head of the person who dared help us. Also on Town Square, you'll find two churches. One, the first parish church in Plymouth, is the same church founded by the Pilgrims in 1620 with a building erected in 1899. The other, the Church of the Pilgrimage, is also descended from the Pilgrims, was the result of a schism in the original church back in 1801. So they had a whole, they had a, a, a townwide schism and just put a church on the other end of the block. Schism. Funny word. Uh, their church building was erected in 1840. The Church of the Pilgrimage is known to have ghostly activity going on inside. Uh, apparently there's a video of spirit communication Ooh. and some people doing a, a the blindfolded spirit box. Ah, oh, that, yes. uh, that old song and dance. Yeah. Uh, so whether it be pilgrim ghosts, disinterred bodies used for medical experiments, decapitated Native Americans, or whatever else may be haunting Plymouth's burial hill, should we really be surprised that so much ghostly activity is happening there? After all, there's a power to our history, not to mention the pilgrims also happened to land smack dab in the mid- middle of the Bridgewater Triangle. Oh, now let's interesting. Get to the Bridgewater Triangle. <laughs> Very cool. There's a region in southeastern Massachusetts known as the Bridgewater Triangle, a term coined by Lauren Coleman, well known to us, and I assume to most of our listeners, mm -hmm. a major cryptozoologist uh, in the 1970s, and first published in his 1983 book, Mysterious America. In it, he mm -hmm. chronicled an area with a high amount of paranormal activity just outside of Boston, which he dubbed the Bridgewater Triangle because of the concentration of reports of ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, and more in the area around West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, and Bridgewater proper. Uh, in 1978, Joseph de Andrade was walking with a friend in the woods of Bridgewater. He said a voice inside his head told him to turn around. And when he did, he saw the mysterious, mys mysterious creature commonly known as Bigfoot walking behind him. <laughs> the creature formerly known as Bigfoot. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Bigfoot. His name's uh, Joe Sasquatch now. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Sasquarelli. Uh, although it walked away before the NTF artist, <laughs> INFT even the not non fungible big Bigfoot <laughs> NFG. Yeah. Uh, although it walked away before Andrade could get close, it led him to spend the rest of his life researching the creature. Hmm. Pretty solid influence. It's pretty uh, solid. The Bigfoot. Uh, the man dedicated the rest of his life to a thing he saw once for a second. People do that. And it's like, I, know. I don't know. <laughs> nothing, of... nothing is more convincing to me than the people who are just like, I don't know what to tell you. It's real. I saw it and I'll prove it. <laughs> you know how you've uh, dedicated your life to nothing, Jordan? I've dedicated my life to that language I'm building out of blinks. Okay, fair enough. That it's like that's what too. also gets me too to where like normal people or like people who are already on a career path go like mm -hmm. it's uh this now. Sure, I'm sure. This this I'm is this. what I do now. Don't worry, I think Blinklish will pick up and people I think it'll catch on. I think. I'm trying to do it to you. Let me know yeah. if I say something offensive. See, that's the thing, is a lot of the time it just looks like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but what I said to you was happy holidays. Oh, okay. But it looked like I was having a fit. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Bridgewater is also infamous for its UFO activity. Mm -hmm. Many feel these can be explained away by the fact that the town is right in the flight path of planes coming in and out of Boston's Logan International Airport, except the UFO reports go all the way back to 1639. Fuck me, Ronald. What? Yeah. (laughs) And were chronicled by none other than the Massachusetts Bay Colony Governor John Winthrop. What? This is so, I, I don't, I don't know if I've heard. I guess I have. This is a very old sighting. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't go into the sightings from John Winthrop in this article, but they you can find them if you just sure. crazy John Winthrop UFO ghost orb things. Have you ever crazy heard about lights. the um like the UFOs that are mentioned in the in like like Indian holy texts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very, sure, yeah, yeah. Very cool. They have a cool name for the ship. Uh, what are they called? The Vermana? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something like that. V, definitely a V word. Anyway, that's not this. <laughs> yeah, they've got the, the like giant chariots. Yeah, with like fucking fire. And, yeah, with like laser beams like on them and shit. Across. Across. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the most famous sightings came in the spring of 1979 when WHDH reporters Jerry Lope and Steve Subraccia witnessed strange lights in the sky at the intersection of Route 24 and Route 106 before encountering a low-flying mysterious object, Lopes, or maybe it's Lopez, I don't know, said was shaped like a baseball home plate that was close enough that he felt he could throw a rock at it. Wow. Ooh, that's Uh, uncomfortably close for me, actually. (laughs) I can see it. It's so crazy. I can see it in my my mind. Uh, If only he had a baseball. Now we're going to jump over to Easton, another area uh, in the Plymouth area. Uh, Norton Police Sergeant Thomas Downey was driving to his home in Easton following his shift on a late summer night in 1971 when he spotted a giant bird in the area, ironically known as Bird Hill. <laughs> Why do you think they called it that? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh my God, Margaret! I was on Bird Hill, and they call it that for a reason. Let me <laughs> let tell me you. Let tell me tell you. you. <laughs> he was, he was just at the edge of the Hockamock Swamp. <clears throat> yeah. Downey claimed the creature saw him and shot straight up into the sky, but not before he observed it stood over six feet tall with a wingspan of eight to twelve feet. Many think Downey saw something similar to the legendary Mothman of Point Pleasant, but Native Americans in Massachusetts have long had a legend of the Thunderbird, a man-sized bird believed to possess supernatural uh, capabilities. Sure. This does seem way more like Thunderbird than This sounds Mothman. like a Thunderbird situation. Boy, did you see that uh, picture of that owl that I shared on Twitter that looks just like the Mothman? Yes. Crazy. <laughs> that was... Uh, yeah. Yes. I was like, oh, I, I see now. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, then we jump to the Raynham Taunton area. Encircles the mysterious area known as the Hockamock Swamp. Nobody's exactly <laughs> sure what Hockamock means, but the common legend is that it is a Native American word for place where spirits dwell. Nope. We would ask them, but we killed them. Oh, God. Does it say that in the thing? No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, you gotta love if they if they did, you gotta be like, hey, you gotta love the candor. <laughs> Either way, if the natives are said to have revered and feared the swamp, and considering the reports that come from that area, it's easy to see why. Yeah. Despite all the development that's taken place around the swamp, there are many parts of it that have been untouched by humans for a long, long time, hmm. and that's where the cryptid creatures are believed to dwell. Not only have there been Sasquatch sightings in the swamp area, but other creatures thought impossible to live in this region have been reported here, including giant snakes, big cats, and the previously mentioned Thunderbirds. Whoa, cool. Giant snakes. Love to hear about it. No shade to big cats or Thunderbirds, but giant snakes? Giant snakes. That's That's my cup of tea. Uh, while some say the Hockamock Swamp is the heart of the Bridgewater Triangle, others argue that it's instead the Freetown State Forest that seems to be the dark center of all the paranormal phenomena in the area. Other people There's say it's of the more lady. of a kidney. <laughs> There's the legend of the Lady of the Ledge, Ooh. which suggests that a Native American princess told by her sachem father that she could not be alone with the white man she loved, threw mm-hmm. herself from the Asinet Ledge and fell to her death below. As such, people who visit the ledge report seeing her spirit, dressed all in white, searching for her lost love. 
Others also report that despite never having suicidal thoughts, standing at the edge of the ledge, they find themselves overcome with the desire to jump. Yikes. Legend is, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one to leave behind, I think, if you're a, a vengeful ghost. I guess suicidal so. ideation, if anyone's within range. That's a dangerous move for sure. Uh, the legend of the Lady of the Ledge is slightly debunked by the fact that the ledge was actually created by a quarry that dug out uh, granite from the area in the early 20th century. <laughs> but that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't discount the sightings and experiences people have had there. I mean, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, in addition uh... to ghosts, you have. Foes and Bigfoot sightings are also common in the Freetown State Forest, as well as at Profile Rock, which isn't too far from the astronaut ledge as the crow flies. There's even the story of the man who lives near Akushnet, is maybe how you say it? <laughs> sure. Akushnet, uh, who says he was abducted and tattooed by aliens. Whoa. <laughs> Dang. Got some wicked sick flash from the uh, side <laughs> yeah. of the saucer. No, dude, what I'm do you not... think the tats are? Dude, I'm not super into Sugar Ray. Go, aliens did this. <laughs> aliens did it. They they love Sugar Ray, not me. I'm fucking telling you. I would never get a tramp stamp of an alien smoking a bong, man. Why that was the aliens. That? Why would I get that? An alien did that, dude. Uh, the Freetown State Forest has also been the site for some horrific true crime, cult activity, and more man-made terrors. It's always people. We go looking for ghosts and it's always like, but the worst monster of all is man. Every uh, of course, time. of course, the Freetown State Forest is best known for the creepy creatures known as puckwudgies, which go back Ooh, to Wampanoag. Yeah, Lord. baby. Full of puckwudgies. Love a puckwudgie. Uh, while interactions with the small demon-like creatures have been reported less and less frequently in modern times, that hasn't stopped them from becoming unofficial mascots for Freetown, including drawing tongue-in-cheek warnings from the local police. Those are puckwudgy sounds. Free puckwudgy sounds <laughs> for your project. Uh, while much of the Bridgewater Triangle features a variety of paranormal phenomena, Rehoboth seems to be ghost central. Well, There's maybe multiple allegedly... sh shouldn't have named it after an H.P. Lovecraft god. <laughs> <laughs> they're great names, but they're not memorable names, you know? Welcome to Rehoboth. God bless uh, there you. Are, <laughs> oh. <laughs> there are multiple allegedly haunted locations that paranormal investigators, such as Greenville paranormal researchers Andrew Lake, have chronicled over the years, including the region around the Shad Factory Pond and the Village Cemetery. There's also the story of the Hornbein School, a historical school building where people have reported still seeing a ghostly class in session through its windows. Hmm. But Rehoboth's most famous ghost is that of the red-headed hitchhiker of Route 44, Whoa. who's said to haunt the roadway right at the Seekonk Rehoboth line. What? What a bummer right. of a ghost to wind up as. <laughs> the red-headed hitchhiker at Seekonk. Constantly looking for a ride for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Not your nobody's, sure who, nobody's, sure, yeah. <laughs> nobody's sure who the spirit is. Nobody's sure who the spirit is seen standing on the side of the road in his dirty jeans and flannel shirt, along <laughs> with his long, shaggy red hair and beard. But when he puts his thumb out for a ride and a driver pulls over to give him a lift, they're never the same again. Ooh. He'll soon... It gets creepy. Ugh. He will soon break out into disturbing laughter before disappearing from the back seat of the vehicle. Whoa, scary. What's even freakier is that reports of the roadside phantoms seem to be on the rise. Wow. This article is fairly recent. This is uh, okay. this guy is out there currently. Dang. He's like he's almost like the flannel man. You know the flannel man? I, I was thinking he might have some flannel man connection. Flannel the big flannel man energy. Scary. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, there's a bunch more, but this is going long, so we'll end it sure. there. That Good. is Plymouth Rock landed Dang. on us. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Boy, spooky. Oh my goodness. All right, let me wrap up. This